Fancy a drink? Just one? What's the worst that could happen? In this masterpiece from Italian painter Caravaggio, we are asked to make a choice. Will you give in to temptation? And if you do, how far will you go? Welcome to Pieces of Art. My name's Ollie Mills, and today let's take a moment to explore Bacchus by Caravaggio. We'll talk about the historical context and composition of the piece, and then I'll share the three things that I find most interesting about it, which are the themes of temptation, deception, and death. The first theme I'd like to discuss is temptation. This painting is not passive. It's asking us two questions. Do we want to give in to temptation? And where will that temptation lead us? It's likely that Caravaggio was asking this of himself as much as he was of the viewer. There are three temptations in this painting, and they form a triangle in the centre of the frame. They are the offered glass of wine, the hand on the robe's ties, and the bowl of fruit. One of the first things we notice when we look at the painting is the glass of wine, which is unmistakably being offered to us. It's elegant, wide, and brimming with liquor. The boy holds it delicately with only two fingers. He feels as though the only polite thing to do would be to take it from him. The full bottle to his right is also an indicator of plenty more where that came from. And wine isn't the only thing on offer. The young man's garment is already partially off his chest, and his left hand grasps the ties of his robe, the only thing holding the rest on his body. The suggestion is loaded with sexual invitation. Bacchus was, after all, the god of ecstasy as well. Finally, there is the bowl of fruit. A common theme in paintings of the time, and a specialty of the artist. Symbolic, even to this day, of bounty, excess, and beauty. Of course, there is a darker side to this allegorical depiction, which we'll come to in just a moment. I'd like to now talk about the theme of deception in this painting. As with so many things in life, the warning signs were there all along if only we just paid attention. Caravaggio litters this work with warnings that the Roman god's offering might not be as innocent as it first appears. Let's start with taking a closer look at the glass itself. At first glance, it looks full and inviting, but if we look closer, his grip seems almost precarious, and we can see ripples on the surface as though he has a slight tremor from the effort of keeping it outstretched. This added degree of motion in an otherwise static portrait could be interpreted as a subtle warning. Several aspects of the young god's appearance and framing also hint that things may not be quite as they seem. The lounge he's sitting on is covered in a drape, but Caravaggio shows us the stained cushions peeking through. This detail, as well as his grimy fingernails, hint that perhaps this Greek god is just as flawed and capricious as the rest of us. However, it should be noted that Caravaggio was known for his realism and therefore may have just been painting the scene as he saw it. I also see deception written on Bacchus's face. He's youthful, with rosy cheeks and full features, but his eyes are different. They're worldly and warning. The arched eyebrows and almost languid gaze hint at a much darker world behind the proffered glass and glimpse of flesh. This is a god who has seen the consequences of his temptations and looks almost curious as to whether another mortal will succumb. Finally, I'd like to talk about the imagery of death in this painting. Caravaggio makes clear the future we will experience if we give in to temptation. He dots the painting with vanitas, or reminders of death, a caution to the viewer that life, youth, and beauty are all fleeting and can be destroyed without ceremony. The first is the fine ring of bubbles surrounding the surface of the carafe of wine. 
They float as though it has just been freshly decanted, making the drink look inviting and delicious, but we know they will soon pop and disappear forever. The bowl of fruit also gives caution that all is not as it seems. At first glance, it appears to be overflowing with juicy abundance, but looking closer, there is literal rot within, a warning that too much of this fruit will make you ill. Finally, we look at the garland of leaves around the bowl and in his hair. They too are turning and slowly dying. In biology, the programmed death of a cell is called apoptosis, and this is from the Greek literally meaning the falling of the leaves. I think the fact that Caravaggio includes all these details is, sadly, a testament to the painful irony of being addicted. You know what you're doing is bad for you, but you just can't stop. This is not naivety, an innocent foray into a dark place. This is an artist that knows only too well the heart-wrenching dichotomy of being in love with the very thing that will kill you. I hope you've enjoyed exploring Bacchus by Caravaggio with me today. As an artist, he was way ahead of his time, probing the edges of the human condition with raw authenticity when such ideas were basically heresy. This painting touches on lust, desire and addiction, but without judgment. These themes of choice and consequence are a feature of Caravaggio's work and have been common themes in other more modern media. To me, this is why this painting has a timeless quality, and its invitation to look inwards at your true desires is still as pointed now as the day it was painted. <laughs>